Hi everyone, um, it's Guy here and I want to take some time to uh, talk to you about uh, something really interesting from the field of development psychology that relates to entity-based and theory and incremental intelligence. Um, so you can kind of listen to what I've got to say and it might resonate to you with certain parts of your life or a lot of your life. So um, entity-based intelligence is to do with how you, in, in, you interpret uh, success into a degree. So for example if you complete a task or a goal and you associate that task to yourself individually to a, maybe just to yourself as an entity or as a characteristic. So example is if you pass a test and you get an A and you turn around and you think to yourself you're really smart. On the other hand if you uh, pass a te a fail a test and you don't get a good mark at all and then you turn around to yourself and you think you're really stupid or, or unintelligent. Now, this kind of belief is basically attributing a characteristic of yourself. So it could be to do with uh, intelligence or it could even to be to do with a physical characteristic like strength. You might turn around to yourself or speed. You might turn around and do a race and think, okay, I am naturally fast or I am naturally slow. <laughs> So, and this is this gets nurtured in us when we're young, like from our adolescence, from people that's around us or people we kind of look up to. So they can be, i.e., parents, teachers, family, friends, and family, uh, friends uh, and family. So, example being, so when you were younger and you did a maths test, and then you were, you know, you you got a passing grade, and your mum or sort of, for example, turned around to you and said, "Well, congratulations, you're really smart." On the other hand, you might have failed that maths test and someone, well, I don't think anyone will turn around to a kid and say you're stupid, or that'll just be fair, wrong, but that might have happened. But most likely scenario is, oh, honey, it's okay, that's not your strongest subject, so maybe find a subject that um, is, uh, you're better in, okay? And what you, what's happening there is you're associating the, the task directly to yourself, your own individuality, your own characteristics. So it's kind of the drawbacks of that is you then interpret failure as personal and success as personal so if you're if you fail at something or you don't do well at something it lowers your self-esteem it knocks your confidence now on the other hand you have something called incremental based intelligence incremental based intelligence is basically um, you don't associate the task or the goal to your own individuality you you more or less interpret it to uh, or associate it to effort so for example if you did a maths exam again and you passed it then you might turn around to yourself and be like mm, I really worked hard on that or if you didn't pass it you might turn around to yourself and say mm, I need to work uh, a little bit harder and again this is reinforced the same way uh, entity based intelligence was reinforced uh, when we were in our adolescence people around us uh, you know, you might have gone to, back home to your mom or dad and said, um, I passed my maths test or the teacher, and they would say, congratulations, see, hard work really pays off. And likewise, if you um, didn't pass it, they might turn around and say, better luck next time, you need to just try harder. And what, you, what happens is you associate effort to a task or reward, so you don't take it directly to you. So, in high, so for example, when you're a bit older or something, and you you might be into sports, and you might come to a, you might do a race or you might play basketball, and you get to a, a place you're stuck, and instead of uh, thinking this is this is this is it, you're more likely to work harder and push yourself more. So. That's basically the differences between entity-based and incremental-based intelligence. Uh, incremental people who have incremental mindsets, they they associate effort. They tr they're more willing, I guess, to try harder because they don't take it directly to themselves. So, for example, if you're entity-based, which is the first one, you're sometimes you're really s more afraid to take risks. So, because you you, you taking you like to stay in your comfort zone. Uh, you might want it. You might you might be a, a, a small a big fish in a small pond. That's kind of the best analogy, right? Because you feel in control of everything. You feel good. Whatever you achieve is you know you, you, it's pushing your self esteem. You don't want to test yourself to a degree because that failure might actually uh, lead to you feeling I don't know depressed, and that's why it's a bit of a dangerous mindset to have. Incremental based in, uh, 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 intelligence, on the other hand is you're willing to try out different things. You're willing to take out risks because the more failures you have, 
the more you just see it as you have to put in more effort, put in the hard work, and you will succeed. Now, there was a study where they did a, a trial on this, which is really interesting. So they did uh, a group of students. So 50% of them was entity-based, and 50% of them was incremental-based. Now, what happens is they gave them a trial of exams. So they gave them three exams. The first exam was dead easy. Everyone passed and did well. I'm pretty sure their entity-based uh, children were feeling themselves. And then you got to the second exam, and the second exam was designed to fail. So no one was going to really pass this. It was That was its design. And what happened was, the, as you would expect, the entity-based children took it really rather hard. The incremental-based children were like, hmm, okay, I need to try harder. Now, the really interesting thing about it is the third exam, because the third exam was as easy, maybe even easier, than the first exam. But what you found was the people who were entity-based uh, uh, actually didn't do so well. They actually performed worse than the first exam, whereas the, the children that were uh, incremental-based uh, still did well. So there it kind of shows that the entity-based children kind of took it to their own kind of, um, I guess, uh, self-confidence and it really affected their own attitude into learning. Uh, whereas the incremental-based children have the ability to, to strive, you know, to take, uh, take hardship and go and progress. A great analogy to kind of finish all of this up is that of a hermit crab. So a hermit crab that, you know, lives in the ocean, uh, it actually borrows, it doesn't have its own shell, it borrows its, um, its shell. So most of its uh, adolescence, it lives in this borrowed shell, and when it grows too big, it outgrows that shell. So it needs to find a new shell. So it ventures out, but this venturing out, looking for a new shell, is really a risk for it because it's the most vulnerable it's, it has been. It doesn't have the armor of the old shell. You know, it's, uh, it's vulnerable to predators. So it goes looking for this journey. And this, for us human beings, is probably where we achieve the most amount of growth. You know, in this kind of transition, because it's risky, it's dangerous, we can be hurt, but it's a journey of self-discovery. Now, there's two things that the hermit crab can become. The first part is it can find a new shelf, grows bigger, get stronger, learns more along that discovery, or it can become an anorexic hermit crab where it stops growing because it just wants to stay where it is, be in that shell, because it's comfortable, it's safe. The problem is you're limiting yourself. And I think this is really just a great way of thinking and a great way of just assessing yourself in how do you think in certain, you know, Env environments, maybe it's a lot of time, maybe it's certain things, it might be sports related, you might be in a sense thing where when you were younger you were told that, you know, uh, more effort based towards sports, but academically you were associated to yourself individually with entity, so you might have two types. I think it's really just a good way of evaluating yourself, um, hope you find it useful, let me know what you think, thanks a lot and have a great day.